Good afternoon, and welcome to the City Club of Cleveland. At 98 years, the City Club is the oldest continuous free speech forum in the country. My name is Hugh McKay, and I'm a member of the City Club's Board of Directors. And I'm pleased to welcome you to today's very special City Club Forum, presented in partnership with KeyBank as part of our Diversity Through Leadership series. Most of our country's history is intertwined in some way with race. From our earliest beginnings, when the first Western European settlers began to subjugate the native people who they found living in these so-called new lands, and then <clears throat> began the horrific saga of the importation of people from Africa to this country in slavery. But at least we know, as our history books teach us, that the Civil War ended slavery 150 years ago or so, and we can reassure ourselves that back then, Americans were perhaps not as morally enlightened as we have become in the many decades since. But did that war and the Emancipation Proclamation really stop all the evils of slavery? Our speaker today, Douglas A. Blackman, would say no. And his brilliant book, Slavery by Another Name, The Reenslavement of Black Americans from the Civil War to World War II, debunks that notion. Slavery by Another Name has been reviewed as precise and eloquent, eye-opening, wrenchingly detailed, urgent, and powerful. And it won the 2009 Pulitzer Prize. Doug Blackman has been the Wall Street Journal's Atlanta Bureau Chief since 1995, where he's covered major business and regional stories such as the subprime meltdown, Hurricane Katrina, and the Florida hurricanes. But his special passion is the American quandary on issues of race, and he has written much about lost episodes of the civil rights movement and the dilemma of how contemporary society should grapple with a troubled past. It is a distinct honor to welcome to the City Club of Cleveland Pulitzer Prize winning author, Douglas Blackman. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here. I appreciate the, the kind introduction. Um, and it's a particular honor. You know, most of the remarks I give, uh, it's just any old place. Uh, but it's not any old place today. Uh, and um, it's a real pleasure to be here in, a, in this forum, uh, with the history of this forum. Uh, it's the first time I have, in any sense, I believe, shared, uh, been at a podium that, in a sense, was uh, once shared by W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, one of my greatest intellectual heroes. Um, and so it's a, a distinct pleasure to be here and with a group of people who uh, I take it, uh, I'm convinced, are uh, concerned about and engaged on uh, issues that, uh, that I find so consequential to our national life, and so it's a real pleasure to be here. But I was asked to come and speak about my book, uh, which I will, um, uh, Slavery by Another Name, uh, which to my astonishment did win the Pulitzer Prize uh, almost exactly a year ago. Um, but I'd also like to engage in a conversation with you, and I hope that it will be a conversation, and I've been warned to expect any kind of conversation uh, uh, in a few minutes. Um, but uh, I, I do look forward to that, and I hope that, we, that it, this can also be a conversation, perhaps about the book, but also about this idea that we have all heard about or been in conversations with others about over the past year and a half or two years. But this idea that somehow we are now entering into a, or have already arrived in, a post-racial society. That America has, by virtue of electing an African-American president, crossed some boundary line into a new era uh, in which these issues of race, these issues of the past, issues of the bad things that were done to black people in the 60s or the 50s or the 40s, uh, that those issues are not as relevant anymore, that those are things we need not talk so much about anymore. Uh, this idea that we have made the necessary progress to reach a place where if there is not complete equality and complete equal opportunity, we are at least near enough to that level of equality that it is time to move on, that it is time for African Americans in particular to abandon what is sometimes called the, the victimization narrative as a fundamental element of black identity in America. And we've all heard versions of that conversation, and there may well be people in the room today who feel very strongly in either direction about 
about that kind of question. And there is a, an honorable, spirited debate uh, to be had about that question. Uh, but I'd like us to talk a little bit about that and about how a book like mine and the story that it conveys, that I, that I hope it reveals, uh, fits into that conversation. Uh, because that's really a question about history and what is history and what is the importance of history, what is the relevance of history to us today. Uh, and, and that's a big, huge question. What does it matter? What does any history matter? Uh, and, of course, no one suggests, no one would, would sanely or sensibly suggest that, that it is time to forget our triumphal history. You know, no, no one would suggest that we should stop talking about George Washington, even though he's been gone a long time and isn't all that directly relevant to anything anymore, or Thomas Jefferson, or Abraham Lincoln, uh, or the the great victory of World War II, the triumphal aspects of our national history are things that we would never consider forgetting or, or putting aside or, or decide to be irrelevant. And so it's really a question about what parts of our history do we choose to remember? Uh, and, and do we remember the bad stuff? You know, do they matter? You know, do, do those terrible things that happened in the past, and one of the messages of my book, revelations of my book, is that far more terrible things than most of us realize did happen, uh, and the consequences of those things were greater than what we may realize or what we have typically understood. And so that's, that is that question. Uh, should the bad past be part of our conversation? Should the past be in our conversation at all? But, it, but this also is not just about revealing bad things and, and beating ourselves up about them. I would venture that it's also, in addition to being a question about what history do we choose to have, to choose as our history, because we do pick our histories. You know, we, we, we all have 32 great, 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 great grandparents, and we don't know the names of most of them. Uh, we know the names of the one that we picked, you know, those, those that we choose to know and whose stories we like the best. You know. Uh, and so we pick our histories. And so this is a question about what American history uh, do we believe is the one, the true one, or the important one, or the one that shapes our decisions today? And that becomes a question about the future as well, of what country do we want to live in? What cities do we want to have? Can we revision a future uh, of America that understands this past or ignores this past? But what does it tell us about the future? What does it tell us about the communities that we would wish to see in our country? And what does it mean to be a leader? On, on these issues of consequence in America today. And so I hope that we'll have a conversation that, that delves into those things. Um, but before we go into all of that, I probably should, uh, as I was telling a group yesterday uh, here in Cleveland, oh, by the way, I, I wanted to mention as well, uh, I am planning to take a collection um, at the end for my bringing the weather to uh, Cleveland that I, <laughs> that, that I brought with me yesterday. Uh, now, it seems to be... The, my value seems to be declining as I looked out the window, but um, uh, I, I understand I've done something remarkable for you. Uh, it did snow in Atlanta three times this year, which I think was more snow than we've had in 100 years in Atlanta, so uh, very different place. But uh, I was telling a group yesterday that uh, I have come to terms with, uh, over the past two years since the book came out, uh, a harsh reality that every author since Moses came down from the mountaintop has had to reckon with. Uh, and that is that not all of you have yet completed reading my book. Um, and um, so uh, for the handful of you closing in on the epilogue, uh, I will, uh, I'll share a little bit with you about what really is the, uh, the story of slavery by another name. Uh, and it is, as the title says, it's the story of the re-enslavement of black Americans from the Civil War to World War II. Um, and the idea that at the end of the Civil War, after the Emancipation Proclamation, after the 13th Amendment, which abolished the constitutional legality of slavery, and the 14th and 15th Amendments, which, which established civil rights and legal rights for African Americans, uh, the, 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 the emancipated slaves and their descendants, after all of those things happened, after all the boys in blue from Ohio came back home, uh, after all of those events that supposedly ended slavery, slavery came back. Slavery was resurrected in the South. 